But we begin tonight with the right-wing takeover of the U.S. Supreme Court. Thanks to ProPublica, Supreme Court members have drawn fresh scrutiny from some, for some ethical lapses. After the nonprofit media organization revealed how Justices Samuel Alito and Clarence Thomas accepted lavish trips from Republican billionaires that they failed to disclose. ProPublica reported, for example, that Justice Alito went on vacation with a billionaire Republican donor and failed to recuse himself from multiple cases involving that donor. And, of course, there are all the goodies billionaire Harlan Crow has bestowed upon, Jaris, uh, upon Justice Thomas, from jaunts to his home with a private garden of evil, to buying Clarence's mother's house and making her his tenant while paying for his adopted son's education. These friends of the court are rich. We're talking folks with luxury yachts and billions at their disposal. And when you unpack the politics of being super rich and powerful in America, it's hard not to think about libertarian billionaires Charles and David Koch. David died in 2019, and his brother Charles, chairman and CEO of Koch Industries, is worth $55 billion, according to Forbes. The Koch network is a colossal, sprawling political machine that has transformed American politics, helping to propel the Tea Party takeover during the Obama years and fight any form of climate change legislation that would diminish the demand for the family product, oil. One of their lasting legacies is turning climate change denial into a mainstream Republican position. The network is sitting on a fortune backed by a deep-pocketed by back deep pocketed donors who give at least $100,000 to attend secretive Coke gatherings, such as the one in the Coachella Valley in California, where donors rub elbows with powerful public officials. One year per ProPublica, per, 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 per the event was at the Renaissance Esmeralda Resort and Spa, featuring NFL Hall of Famer Deion Sanders, who was working with the Cokes on an anti-poverty an anti -poverty programs in Dallas. Also on the event's agenda was a new initiative focused on getting conservatives onto the Supreme Court and the federal bench. Of course, there's nothing illegal about an NFL star and a private citizen giving a talk to the Cokes. But that isn't where the story ends. When you think about the Supreme Court scandal and how conservative Supreme Court justices have sold access to the highest court in the land, one missing component has been the Koch brothers. That is, until now. Because who benefits the most from a Supreme Court justice's pro-wealth, pro-corporate, pro-oligarch decisions? The Koch brothers, of course, hands down. The ProPublica piece said that Thomas has attended at least two Koch Brothers donor summits. It also exposed Clarence Thomas's personal relationship with the Kochs. According to the piece, their relationship developed over years during trips to the Bohemian Grove, the all-man retreat where $500 wine flows along with clam chowder and chili by the gallon. Tucked inside the Sonoma Valley, the Sonoma County Redwoods, says ProPublica, a member or his guest can wander from the Grove's shooting range to a lecture by Blackwater founder Eric Prince, or mosey from a mint julep party to a performance by a symphony orchestra. More than one attendee recalled walking outside in the morning to find a former cabinet secretary who fell asleep, drunk in the grass. You see this photo? That's Clarence Thomas on the left next to Ken Burns and Charles Koch in their man cave of sorts. Thomas went there for two decades, where he stayed in a small camp with Harlan Crow and the Kochs, according to records and people who spent time with him there. Thomas attending Koch donor summits, the years-long personal relationship, all of this puts Thomas in the extraordinary and damning position of having helped a political network that has bought multiple, brought multiple cases before the Supreme Court, which is what this allyship and dark money scheme really boils down to. Almost 40 years ago, the case Chevron versus Natural Resources Defense Council directed courts to defer to reasonable federal agency interpretations of ambiguous statutes. It became one of the Supreme Court's most cited decisions, one that legal scholars lump in with Brown v. Board of Education and Roe v. Wade in terms of significance. The Koch Network has challenged Chevron in the courts. And now, in a case the Supreme Court will hear this coming term, a landmark pillar of SCOTUS history could be reversed, putting major health, safety, and environmental protections at risk. Another rare and curious development about the case is that in 2005, 
Clarence Thomas wrote the majority opinion in the case. But then, in 2020, he renounced his own earlier decision, writing that he determined that the doctor is unconstitutional after all. And who would benefit the most from a, remo uh, the, a reversal of Chevron? The Koch network, of course. It's really the nail in the coffin, isn't it? The story of a Supreme Court justice whose corruption is so thorough, so complete, that he sold America out to the highest oily bidder. I'm joined now by Jesse Eisinger, ProPublica senior editor, and Ellie Mistow, justice correspondent for The Nation. Um, oh, uh, great reporting once again by ProPublica. I want to ask you um, about just how long this relationship with the Cokes has lasted and how beneficial it seems to have been in the courts for the Cokes. That is to you, Jesse. Oh, I think he's muted. Oh, Excuse Jesse, me. got you muted. Sorry, I, <laughs> I apologize. Um, no thanks for the kind words about our reporting. Um, the relationship has lasted for decades now. Um, it uh, seems to have started through Harlan Crow, who's been a very close friend of Clarence Thomas's and took him to the Grove initially. Um, the thing that's really notable about this is that these relationships happened after Thomas came to the court. So they weren't friendships that he had from growing up. Of course, he grew up poor. Harlan Crow did not. The Cokes did not. Um, and uh, he didn't develop them in college. These were all <laughs> friendships uh, that he says are, you know, he's called Harlan Crow close friend, um, but they were developed after he uh, became a Supreme Court justice. And we think that's extraordinarily notable. It is. Uh, you know, uh, Ellie, this story has everything. Uh, it has Leonard Leo. It's got Harlan Crow, the guy with the uh, Garden of Evil. Of course, it's got the Cokes who've been missing from this up to now. And it's also got Ginny Thomas. Of course, it's got Ginny Thomas. Let me read a little piece of this. During um, the event, one of these events, um, the group announced a new initiative focused on getting conservatives onto the Supreme Court and the federal bench. The network, which had already given millions of dollars to Leonard Leo's Federalist Society, planned to mobilize its activists to buy advertisements to push senators to vote for President Donald Trump's judicial nominees. They appointed a former employee of Ginny Thomas, the justice's wife, to lead the effort. It's got everything, Ellie. And at this point, how do we conclude that the Supreme Court is anything other than a bought and paid for trifle of the super rich, or at least six of them or some of them? Yeah, look, I've been waiting for the Koch brothers to show up because anytime a public official goes out for auction in this country, the Koch brothers have a front row seat at Sotheby's, all right? So, like, you knew they were going to get involved in this story eventually. But here's the thing, Joy. Uh, ProPublica can keep dropping the people's elbow on Clarence Thomas until the cows come home. When are the regulatory agencies, when is Congress, when is the DOJ going to move on this man, right? Do the Koch brothers have to play Cl Clarence Thomas in gold bars? Is that, what it is that what it takes to get the Justice Department's attention? Because if it's so, then I'm sure that we can find some gold bars or some platinum um, ducats uh, that Thomas has, has as well. But whatever it's going to take, at some point, the DOJ and Congress need to investigate this man and bring him to heel because he's never going to stop, all right? That's the other, that's the thing that I think all of this ProPublica reporting has shown. It's not like Thomas is slowing down on the graft. He's going to keep going until somebody regulatorily stops him. It's an excellent point. Jesse Eisinger, has, has there been any contact from the DOJ uh, or have members of Congress, any of the committees contacted ProPublica about, it, about these reports? Oh, uh, well, there have been no public uh, announcements of any uh, DOJ investigation. All we've really seen is the Democrats responding in Congress, and it's been pretty anemic. Um, they've yep. asked for Harlan Crow to come testify. They've asked for Leonard, Leonard Leto to come testify. Both of them have declined, and they're in some kind of process of attempting to get them to come. Um, and, of course, John Roberts declined to come and testify about implementing a code of conduct or an ethics uh, rule, ethics rules for Supreme Court justices. Now, as we point out in the story, they're not uh, required to adhere to any code of conduct. Um, the code of conduct only applies to lower court judges. And the Supreme Court 
justices make up the rules by themselves or they decide for themselves what's appropriate and what isn't. So, you know, what I think Clarence Thomas is in effect saying is, what is it about lifetime appointment that you guys don't understand? Because, um, you know, I think he's acting. He doesn't respond to our reporting. He doesn't respond to our questions. Um, he's made one statement this year. And so, you know, yeah. he's acting with impunity and there's no reason to think uh, he has anything but impunity. Yeah. Or if he was still invited to the cookout, it'd be uh, who going to check me, boo? Uh